This video is sponsored by Wanted Dead. COD World War II is a weird game to say the least, releasing as the first boots on the ground COD game in years and bringing us back to an era that COD hasn't touched in nearly a decade. With all the gameplay options modern and futurist games have, Sledgehammer found themselves in a strange position on making a COD game that could live up to the new standard while not disrespecting the real life history our very live veterans experienced. World War II was actually one of the last COD games I really played a lot of until I jumped ship on the franchise entirely until Modern Warfare 2 2022. I enjoyed the tone that Sledgehammer tried to set at the opening credits. Bringing in that somber piano with the filmic overlay brings us back to that time period this game is set in. And again with these opening statements, Sledgehammer is priming us for the weight of the conflict this era of history entails. The music too with that fact. I'm hopping on this now because there's going to be a massive unintended shift in tone that I'll discuss later. But for now, I'm really digging the opening of this campaign. Ooh, that was a smooth transition. This day we set upon a mighty endeavor. Say what you will about World War II, and from here on out if I say World War II, it'll be in reference to the game itself, unless spelled out completely. But the main theme is the first one in a long time to stick with me and move me in a COD game. I think the last time music stuck with me after a Call of Duty game was Black Ops 2 menu music, but that doesn't compete with a complete theme like here. And to set free a suffering humanity. In the lead up to World War II, there was a lot of talk about showing the horrors of war and not shying away from what happened there. And those are really just more marketing lies, just like with the last week's ghosts. It's Activision's favorite. I'm going to treat this game the way Sledgehammer created it, and that was as a World War II action hero game with no shortage of American exceptionalism. Viewing this game through that lens makes everything else about it much more palatable and much more enjoyable. And that's not me knocking those kind of World War II stories. It's been a criticism of this game that it's too Michael Bay and not enough Schindler's List. A bit of a dramatic comparison, but you understand my point. I guess the question I'll pass off to you guys is, do all war stories have to highlight the atrocities of war and the horrors in it? Is there a place for a story like this that wants to highlight the heroics of the men and women that served? Of course there is, but do you think World War II goes too far in that direction of spectacle that it disrespects the time and history, or is it okay for a game to just have fun with the time period and have minute-long train wrecks? I'm genuinely curious because I'm on the fence. And for this video, I'm going to just take the side of enjoying the spectacle rather than trying to explain it away. It's the point of the channel after all. Enjoy what I can and please give me the strength to understand what I can't. The opening cutscenes brings us through the most pivotal points of Daniel's tenure as a soldier. From D-Day to the train wreck, the woods where Turner died, and then the Battle of the Bulge, the final push from Germany. You'll notice that the Rhine is left out and that's because it's set up as a bit of a twist that Daniel refuses his ticket home. It's why you can't scroll any further than the current mission you're on when selecting one to hide this twist. We've gone back in time all the way to World War II, but I want to go back to a time that's near and dear to me, and that'd be the seventh generation of console hardware by Studio 110 Industries, which was developed as a love letter for those who love and remember the PS3 360 era of games. It seriously felt like when I played it, it was a time capsule to back then. So much so that I had to double check when this game was released. The game is set in a cyberpunk vision of the late 80s with the tech of the early 90s that leads to a really interesting flavor of the cyberpunk genre not being rooted in super futurism. And with this game being a throwback to that time, 110 took a self-aware approach with tons of pop culture jokes and easter eggs. I think my favorite part of the game is that it's not meant to be played forever like recent single player games. It's a complete game with an 8-10 to 10 hour story of just hack and slash action that's just fun to play. It seriously brought me back to my childhood when I'd go to the game store, pick up a single player game because the box looked cool, and go home and just play it all night. Want to Dead is available at up to a 50% discount on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. The sale ends on September 4th on Steam, the 5th for Xbox, and the 13th for PlayStation. Bring yourself back to what I consider the golden age of gaming using the link in my description or pinned comment to get your copy today. Also, we can take back France from the Nazis, but the waiting's been half the battle. This is the first conflict Daniel finds himself in. Waiting is half the battle. I feel like that line is really a subtle way of sliding in the fact that some, if not many, soldiers relish the idea of going to war. The excitement, adventure, glory of it all. Which we see, of course, shatter moments after making landfall. It's great because that's what a lot of the propaganda and basic training instilled in the hearts and minds of soldiers. World War II doesn't get everything perfect, but it does get some things right. So he asked me for my watch, and I'm thinking, what the hell are you on my watch for? You're the captain of the goddamn football team. <laughs> Zussman is talking about a high school football while sailing off to war. When I heard that, it really kind of shook me and reminded me just how young these soldiers from the silent generation were going into this war. I hated Zussman the first week of basic, but now he's probably the best friend I have in the world. That's always how it goes, right? <laughs> all right so I gotta keep all my fingers. I'm gonna take photo of the year. Sadly, photo of the year is like the ones he took at the end, helping expose just how horrible the Nazi party was. When he takes off his glasses, the only thing that happens is he can't see shit. Ironic that the only guy here that can't see wants to be a photographer. Life's full of fun little ironies. Or writers who just like having fun, whatever. Patron Saint of Soldiers. 
He's had my back since Kasserine. You know, I think David would be quite proud knowing his little brother finally joined up. Actor who played Aiello was Javi in The Walking Dead New Frontier. My money's on Zussman. Backing up your bestie. I hate how much fun that game is. I'm not endorsing it, but you know when you're young and you find something that becomes your entire personality trait for a week? Well, Five Finger Filet was that for me. I shouldn't have gotten as good as I did back in seventh grade. My son never shake hands with a Jew. You know? I don't think she's the only one in this time period. What? I'm just being real. Well, you think you're special, huh? The crowds are gonna eat your lunch. No, not our lunch, Sergeant. You know, if I had to deal with fighting Transformers and hearing Shia LaBeouf scream every two seconds, I would be a hard ass too. Our triumph will be etched into the hearts and minds of a grateful world for untold generations. Don't worry, they'll remind us every chance they get. I'm kidding. It goes without saying how grateful we are about the sacrifice made during World War II. I'm not dissing them. His pep talk reminded me of the one Coach Johnson gave us on our Thanksgiving Day game versus Austin. Again, comparing war to experiences in freaking high school, while he's about to experience among the worst days of the war. Juxtaposition to rip the player's heart out? One last chance to show how green and prepare these boys are for the reality of warfare? Both work. I'm sure you remember we lost that game by 42 points. Lost the game by 42 points. Said game that he's comparing to the speech before Normandy. 42 is the meaning of life, right? And there's about to be a lot of life lost here. You could say this is a metaphor for how we all lost the meaning of life on the beach that day. For the, both the Germans and the Allies. In a way of the horrors and PTSD that follows watching brothers be ripped apart. Or by exterminating those who under different circumstances one might call brother. Pearson breaks free. We'll all get bit. Turner, Pearson, Zussman, Aello. World War II was decidedly inspired by Band of Brothers. Michael Condry, co-founder of Sledgehammer, said in reference to the show, and that's a great hero's war, kind of the last that was recognized as a noble cause in a war, hence why we have such a focus on the men and their heroics. Ever since I could hold a rifle, I wanted to be like you, Paul. It's cute if you believe in the flashback scene is among the first times Daniel's actually held a rifle, his failure being a catalyst for the rest of his life. 20 seconds! It is exactly 20 seconds before the ramp drops. Oh, it would have been if, you know. Get your head down and keep moving! Daniel! Damn, all the cutscene transitions to gameplay, some of the best I've ever seen. There has been criticism of World War II being another game that depicts D-Day, and that it's basically a rip of Saving Private Ryan, but worse, down to the shell-shocked moment. I say, it's been a while since we've had a major studio recreate D-Day, and even longer since COD itself did it, going all the way back to 2005 with Big Red One. And what do you expect? Saving Private Ryan already perfected what it was like, and anything short of that is going to be seen as less than. You say, just don't do D-Day then, and I say, how could you not? I enjoyed being able to play this mission on modern hardware, and when played on veteran, it really is just impossible to advance up the beach. Ooh, look at that. Here, take this. With World War II going back to boots on the ground, Sledgehammer wanted to take it a step further and bring it back to COD 1. This, and going back to World War II, was a clear sign to us in the marketing campaign that COD was completely remembering where it came from after the whole fiasco that was the advanced era of COD. And I really liked health packs, especially on the harder difficulties, made every mistake you made matter and have lasting impact. You had to give more thought into your movements and pushes as health is finite. This is also an aspect that pushes that Band of Brothers type feel with squad commands. You're going to burn through ammo, need health packs, and want a mortar strike on a machine gun nest. We come to rely on our allies much more than we generally would in the COD campaign, which is something I will always praise, giving us reason in gameplay to give a shit about our companions. Avoids the ludonarrative dissonance of me just leaving everyone behind, being a murder machine, then being best buds and cutscenes saying things like couldn't have done it without you good looking out and if the existence of heroic actions wasn't enough for you to understand the thesis of this game then i don't know what would we are meant to feel like a hero in world war ii and i think that's okay for a game i don't think it's an fps's fourth entry in a franchise to educate us that war is bad though i might be falling for some might say war propaganda i like feeling like a badass hero in world war ii and like michael country said it was the last war that had a noble cause that the entire world could get behind Okay, stay with me. Medic! I really thought they were going to go for this, killing our best friend in the first battle we take part in. I'm kind of glad they didn't because Dustin is my favorite among the crew. Doesn't feel like a caricature. We got ALO, the cool vet, Styles, the nerdy camera guy, Daniels, the main hero with a character arc with some... Let's say some choices only someone who's experienced it would understand. Then there's Zussman, who feels the most real out of all these guys, has to endure the worst shit of everyone, and always tries his best and doesn't come out on top just because he tried. Those girls in Paris are waiting for you. <laughs> Calling back to the boats. How about another look at your girl? Huh? See what I'm saying? I always try and laugh in the worst of situations. He's just a little relatable guy, giving us the chance to be on the opposite end of what we just received on the beach. Daniels! Thermite! I hear thermite and I always think of Walter White. I can't help myself. Beachhead secured. We'll bivouac at the second hedgerow after the ridge. 
Welcome to the Bloody First. The Bloody First became a nickname for the first infantry division, and made even better as the last time we were on Normandy in a COD game, it was Big Red One, another nickname for the first infantry division. The addition of the map displaying the ground gained by the Allies is a nice touch to give us a tangible view of the progress we're making. Schmeling would have KO'd Lamada. No way. And Schmeling's a Nazi. I'd shoot him in a heartbeat. Can't be our band of brothers without getting to see them shoot the shit between firefights, right? Now, they made him their poster boy. That guy didn't have a choice. We all got a choice. Directly speaking from his experience with Paul and not taking the shot. If Zussman can take a knife in the gut and come out swinging, I like our odds just fine. That don't mean shit to me. Seeing the contrast between Turner and Pearson keeps things interesting on the home front, so to speak. Pearson is kind of their Captain Sobel, if you will, being the higher rank that you despise. World War II came out in 2017 and still looks amazing. For yearly releases, I've always enjoyed that COD has stayed competitive in the graphical department. Then, with future games like Modern Warfare 2019, started leading the pack. You know, a wound like this takes eight weeks to heal. I'm ready, Sergeant. Pearson also just isn't an asshole for the sake of it. It's framed that way, and his trauma in no way excuses his behavior, but a squad is only as strong as his weakest link, and I don't blame him for being concerned. Nice attention to detail with him coming out at seven weeks instead of eight weeks, as Operation Cobra took seven weeks after the Normandy landings. You'd hope they get little things like this right in such a well-documented history, and they do at pretty much every corner, but it's still win. So you're good, huh? I'm just fine and dandy, sir. Zussman, people, you gotta love his grit. You got guts, Private. I just don't want to see him. Concerned compliments from Commander Killjoy. They never stood a chance. I'm guessing no to the open casket. Now that's somebody's son. Nah, it's a crowd. Uh, Daniels is right. Daniels being the model good guy. In such a short campaign, you can't really get into the intricacies and nuances of the war. So we get little comments here and there, such as that, as a reminder that everyone is still human and some still deserve empathy. The Germans had a good strategy here, split the column and cut off the retreat. I gotta praise it because there's a reason COD games are best sellers year after year. The gunplay is just perfection. The best arcade shooter in the industry, some might argue. Never failing to feel tight, responsive, and my favorite, guns having virtually no recoil so I can actually hit a damn thing. Sound design in this era of COD also took a step up. For Black Ops 3 onwards, it's the best it's ever been. The ping from the Garand is half the reason I use it so much this playthrough. Woo! World War II doesn't baby us, giving us a shot lead indicator. Certified gank with a gold lead. Snap to it! Charlie's up sh creek and we're the paddle! Let's go! The only thing more dangerous than the enemy is pride. Some sound advice from the guy we're meant to hate. Back home, you want to settle something? You do it head on. It's the only way to earn respect. I live by that myself. You gotta give it to get it. You all right? Uh, I'm sorry, Paul. Oh, it's actually Daniel's theme. Now that makes it so much better. It's only natural to be scared. Seems to be the main theme of the game, allowing yourself to be afraid, not taking the pride in the fact that you're fearless. We constantly hear from characters that you should be afraid of situations. We're all just people at the end of the day, and if you think you're not afraid of nothing, then <laughs> I got news for you. But now it's not just him I gotta live up to. It's Pearson. I love that. First, gotta live up to insinuates that he's passed. Oh, so subtly, though, so you might not even notice it the first time around. And second, Pearson is dealing with the exact same guilt that Daniels is, and him having to live up to Pearson in a roundabout way is living up to himself, taking accountability and trying one's best to make up for past mistakes. I think the hardest thing to get past with World War II and why many didn't enjoy it as much as, say, World at War is because its presentation is just too cinematic. It looks amazing, no doubt about that, but it looks too good that it doesn't have the same grit that World at War did. Everything almost looks sanitized, if that makes sense, and you start to lose that grounded connection to the action and soldier when you got focus poles and depth of field and what is supposed to be a visual scene through a human's eyes. Where's the win? Game looks so good, it shoots itself in the foot. Kind of like... Any questions? Good, I have a question. Aw, I feel bad for Styles. He's such a cutie, though. Don't worry, I've got your back. You better! Little does Zussman know just how much he means by that. Ooh, do I feel so cool holding my breath and seeing the whole world slow down to take that perfect shot. So the conversation about the censorship of the Nazi party flag in multiplayer. Is it even worth it me addressing it here? The reason that this exists is because, in Sledgehammer's words, the multiplayer doesn't provide the proper context to display that symbol, and also to adhere to laws around the world with the display of the swastika. World at War had its own censored version released in Germany because of that fact. What we all heard this translate to at the time is they want money and don't care about history. This one's a pretty tough one to find a light in, as is my job though. And the only positive I could argue is Sledgehammer is on record stating that they wanted anyone to feel represented in their multiplayer. You know, the mode where it's about getting points, XP, and winning a made up game, and using World War II as a setting for that. This means being able to play as black Germans, for instance, as your player avatar. And then to have that with the Nazi flag flying around didn't sit right with them. 
So they made the decision to remove the flag from multiplayer and have that. They really did try to have their cake and eat it too. I tried to find a win. I really did. I understand there's a lot of flaws in that argument, and I'm curious how you guys feel about it. I wonder if his name was Ben. Damn, two Telltale Walking Dead references. I'm on fire. This is one of those spectacle scenes people love to point out as egregious. But like, what the hell else do you expect to happen when bombed in a bell tower? There's got to be one person that experienced something like this for sure. You see wings on me, Private? <laughs> no, Sergeant. That's because I'm not your very f godmother! <laughs> I want more Josh Dumal. Anyone have any recommendations? Leave them below the like button. My brain is jelly at this point, and it is so true when they say everything in one's life connects to their childhood. Every time I see a grenade launcher, it's actually called a noob tube, and I see Wasteland from Modern Warfare 2 with a nuke in 25 seconds. I'd say they came through pretty well, wouldn't you, Sergeant? See what I'm saying? I hope y'all are f***ing ready. I hope y'all are ready! Are you prepared for- Train go boom. Proved yourselves in Marinier, which is why you'll get the opportunity and the privilege. <laughs> it's just like working at a restaurant, right? You do such a good job, you get to do other people's work. We heard about Marinier. Impressive. Good God, you're a woman. And yeah, there weren't a lot of women fighting World War II. But- there were a couple small instances, and I think it should be celebrated that they're getting their time in the sun for a change. Reminds me of the time we parachuted into Vercourt. Ambush that Gestapo patrol. A fun nod because Odette Sanson Hallows was tortured and interrogated by the Gestapo, a member of the SOE. Okay, maybe fun isn't the right word to use, but you know what I'm saying. Since COD has to have its obligatory stealth missions, I'm glad we're finally seeing the mechanic expanded just a bit, giving us cool takedowns and detection meters. Woo, they got me. <laughs> you got me, Sledgehammer, you cheeky bastards. <laughs> I want all that just because I know people hate it and I love being contrarian to find a win sometimes. <laughs> Seriously though, I think it's so f***ing good. There is a graph for things like this. It's the same thing with spectacle as with jokes. They all start great, but the longer it goes, the less funny it gets. But then magic starts to happen at the point where it becomes funnier and more enjoyable because of the just pure ridiculousness and the fact that it just keeps going. And that's what this train wreck is. A metaphorical, literal, whatever you want to call it, train wreck. Just when you think it's going to stop, it just doesn't. I like to imagine a room of deads reviewing this scene just for it to end in dead silence and someone just go, I think we need another car to crash. And everyone just cries. I figure we can survive Pearson, we can survive anything. I fought alongside him with Kasserine. We should all be so brave. What? Sowing the seeds of doubt that maybe he's not what meets the eye? First, we enter the wolves den. Ah, perfect. Daniels knows all about those. <laughs> if you're stopped, the cover story must be ironclad. Ironclad? Yeah, it might be as tough as the Russians. Oh. Wait, it's Iron Curtain. I'm about 30 years too early for that joke. This mission walked in World War II so that a similar one, Desperate Measures in Cold War, could run. I can't be the only one that saw this basement and thought it looked eerily similar to the one found in Glorious Bastards, where Michael Fassbender put his fingers up wrong. Like, you even see me looking around kind of shook. I swear, it's gotta be a reference to the film. This mission shows promise in COD that not every release is a competition in who can make the dullest campaign. It's nothing groundbreaking. I don't think the franchise has done anything like that since COD 4, but it shakes up the pacing just enough to make me miss shooting guys in the field a little bit. You actually gotta review your cover story. I took like three glances and was like, Check this shit out. Fräulein Schneider. Oh, now, if you will indulge me, perhaps we can converse in English, for as you know, I'm sure practice makes perfect. And now we've got an homage to the opening scene of Inglorious Bastards. I swear to God, this shit was planned. You look so serious. But my God, I will miss the cuisine. Take the Ortolan. Down to the constant swaps between charismatic and charming to scary and threatening, just like Hans. Oh, we get a chance to be more of a good guy than the traditional kill everyone in our path. We thought with the liberation of Paris, we'd be one step closer to home. But our troubles are just beginning. <laughs> I hate that. It's clever, but feels so stupid at the same time. You know, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. I hate to say it. I think she's cutting you loose. Or hey, maybe it's like Schrodinger's letter. You know, you don't open it, she's still your girl. <laughs> They're such buds. Might as well be 10 hours. You can't turn or read tank support the now. The tanks are covering our flag. Everybody pipe down and let me think, God no, damn it. we don't have time to think. All right, Daniel. I honestly believed he listened to Zussman. It just did the first thing that came to mind. In the heat of the battle, sometimes it's the best you can do. Getting to have a tank battle is pretty neat, and having to flank it to even have a chance at winning is 
historically accurate. And if you know anything about the tiger, you know this is a David and Goliath situation and would be a death sentence anywhere else in a video game. That fear is utilized as much as possible here because it is stated that one tiger could pretty much hold the line against up to 12 Shermans. <laughs> we got Private Rogers, you know, Captain America. Let me Nobody's go. going. You got two minutes. I'm going with you. Nope, just Daniel. It's too dangerous. I need everyone here to cover the perimeter. Yes, sir. Oh, what's that? You're sending a man alone in an active war zone? I don't know much about military, but this totally seems like a setup for us to be ambushed by the developers. Would you look at that? Collateral damage is a good mission for humanizing the Germans who weren't fighters or didn't support the Nazi party. It's not clear which one of these people fall over, but doesn't matter. It also highlights the desperate levels the Nazis were ready to resort to to hold on to whatever ground they could, not caring even about their own. Who decided this was a rescue op? We thought there was time, sir. Backing your higher up, even though you disagreed. If it's over, we're here for you, pal. I tried to warn you. College, let the man speak. She's pregnant. Of course she is. What better way to raise the stakes? I could use another cup of joe. Come on, you mooks, let's give him some space. But I don't want coffee. Sure you do. <laughs> I wish we got more of Styles. I identify with him too damn much. No mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great. Duty first. That's right. The first infantry division's motto. Our turret sections finally have some flexibility. We've got an ammo counter to watch and a choice if we even want to man them. Horrors of war. Is that a win? Can I even say that in good conscience? Sniper! Keeping with our Private Ryan inspirations, or even better, Band of Brothers, getting pinned down by a sniper has got to be the most horrifying thing. If I made decisions based on your gut, Private, we'd still be on the boat at Normandy. Damn! I'm gonna miss Turner here in a couple minutes. He's the kind of guy I'd follow in the battle. Tell that to Pearson. Sergeant Pearson. You just pray you're never in that position. But he already was! Woo! I love, love, love that we got the dolphin dive instead of the slide in World War II. That'd just be another thing people would rage about in this game at this point. No one was sliding around corners to confirm kills in World War II and blah, blah, blah. Diving is just fun. In multiplayer, it doesn't really give you an advantage from it, but whenever you'd pull it off over some cover and just f***ing laser beam somebody, it was a good time. You should have waited for There us. wasn't time. What about our We men? had orders! <clears throat> The hell with our goddamn orders! I like that Pearson's issue is that he's course correcting too far in the other direction. He got his men killed by trying to save them and disobeying orders. Now he can't help but follow them to the biggest, most capital T because of that failure. Gotta love the sneaky door loading screens. It's not often we can get a boss battle on COD games, so I'll take it. It's Perez! Not anymore. It was an honor. No sacrifice too great. These cutscenes also just look incredible. As I was writing this, my girlfriend walked up and saw the screen and said, that's a game? Really? That looks like a movie. That looks real. And she's 100% right. God, cutscenes starting here with World War II is just next level. No sacrifice too great. Also tears, calling back to the Division's motto. And this makes the Real of War hit harder. Turner doesn't even last more than like two seconds after trying to hold them off. No heroic stand where he it takes down 20 enemies and covers their escape. Just an unceremonious, unfair death. So I'm making you my second and you will support me 1,000%. Oh God, that's basically a deal with the devil. Setting up some really interesting future conflict though. To turn. 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 Lucky son of a He's been an ass and danger to the division since the start. Seeing him drunk seemingly trying to be one of the boys makes me sympathize with him. With him being in command the way he does, I'm sure he doesn't have a long list of friends. Merry f Christmas. It's insane how one shot can change your whole perspective on a character. Seeing his eyes break for a second on my first playthrough showed us he's got something underneath that hard exterior. Jesus, just look at all this. It's got that fluffy, furry look that makes it look so comfy. I bet that German ain't even dead. Just nap it in the soft snow. Need to say again how amazing these cutscenes are. Obligatory if they were Russian, they'd have no issue with this. Sergeant, any extra coats or blankets? You look just fine to me. I wonder if some of these cold conditions hoped for a fight to get the blood pump and warm up at all. Has anyone in the comments served in the cold before and give us some insight about what that's like? I'd love to hear. Looky here. It's a regular old St. Nick. Throw it under our tree. Even in the worst conditions, I love that our soldiers did everything they could to keep spirits up. After all, what more can you do? We spend every day doing the smallest things to give ourselves meaning. And when under the lens of war, everything we do becomes so much more highlighted and more sacred. Howard was part of the company that took the ridge. I can't believe they let him fight. Oh yeah, they even let us die. I've heard some backlash about Howard being in the game and that this exchange is nothing but lip service and a hollow attempt at diversity. I like to be more hopeful and say this exchange was placed to highlight more of the camaraderie these brothers share and how much skin color doesn't 
matter in the context of war and more importantly everyday life there was massive amounts of discrimination and racism surrounding the enlistment of black soldiers let alone black citizens in the 1940s there are other movies books and media displaying the racism black soldiers endured in world war ii and i ask the question to you all again should world war ii have made it more prominent to tackle the realities of world war ii more than just nodding that they exist World War II does a fantastic job of constantly having attacks that just come out of nowhere, giving us that raw feeling our vets all shared. That every day we're dead men walking. And much easier sentiment to accept when faced with it every day. Rover Joe! Rover Joe! This is Dagwood White 5 requesting close air support! Over! Copy that, Dagwood White 5. The transitions like earlier with Perez and the tank battle are fantastic. Air support isn't a magic pixie that's on call like other COD conditions might have for us. We just gotta wait and hope. Well, in our case, we get to play as the air support, which gives us a secondary goal of destroying these German fires quickly to help out at the bulge. It perfectly highlights the size of the battle, reminds us how minuscule Daniels is in the grand scheme of the war. This was an alright fighter section with some mid controls, which I totally forgave after I found the lock on button. That was when this turned just into cinematic awesomeness. I don't know if it was a bug, but each of these MGs throughout the campaign ADS like this, which feels intentional. When on an MG like this, I can only imagine the goal is to just cover the battlefield with lead and hope to hit something, rather than try to be precise down the irons. Use the carnage of your bullets to aim instead. Could be wrong though. On both too. But it shook up the field of the turret section enough for me to enjoy it again. We gotta change flanks. Again, this battle extends much further than my 90 POV. Daniels, tell me that radio still works. Affirmative. Call in an airstrike on those tanks. They're inside the same where I tell you. Not to explode. I could barely understand sh that's either perfect or terrible sound design. I'll let you decide. That's some funky camera work for his little tumble. <laughs> to say <laughs> heat at the moment getting some more open ended levels i love to see it it was close you okay some great symbolism for what is about to befall zussman and daniels one enduring the worst hell and the other surviving a shot and the ride no 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 you're not going anywhere zussman was captured this thing comes first i can't oh. leave him the entire game had been being a model soldier getting the mission done. Just like that, on a dime, World War II completely took me by surprise. Never expected Daniels to just disobey orders to go after Zussman, and I loved it. And I know you did too, which makes the reveal of what happened with Pearson perfect. As of right now, we're on Daniels' side, and later we'll be forced to understand Pearson. To us, this is justified, and Pearson's the asshole. Later, we're forced to see ourselves in Pearson, which makes our skin crawl, or at least made mine because of how much I judged him without knowing the full story. Finally realizing he's no more immune from the human mistakes than us, or Daniels, rather. Desertion is a capital offense. So maybe I should just do us all a favor and finish the job. Sergeant! With that said, that's what I believe World War II was going for with Pearson's character, but they don't really hit the mark. During and seemingly after the ride, we become chum Pearson, and he's supposed to be our buddy because we understand each other and relate. But that doesn't change the fact that he was about to be judge, jury, and executioner right here, and World War II decidedly ignores this fact. World War II isn't without its faults at all. And I'll admit, some of these COD campaigns have been truly tough to write for. I guess you could defend this as, like, a commentary about how military structure and power hierarchy can corrupt, but that's not at all the theme they were going for. So I'm just going to call this a wash. Zussman is a real G! We're Americans, period. Zussman is a badass. Perfectly illustrates how batshit the Third Reich's genocide was. Like, we needed a reason. This Nazi officer is staring down a Jewish man and can't even tell. They'll remember World War II as Hitler targeting Jewish people, extended to many other groups of people as well. Eventually boiling down to that, if they just didn't like you, a reason would be found. Why didn't be a bronze star in your future? You're a bona fide hero. It rings hollow as Daniel's best friend is still stuck somewhere in Germany. And Daniel's fantasy about returning home, he dresses just the same as Paul, being just like him. We quickly learn it isn't real, and for Daniel, he could never be like Paul, knowing that Zussman was still out there. He's yet to earn that outfit and heads back. Best feeling in the world, ain't it? Facing down hell and coming home a bona fide hero. He's hearing Davis's words through Paul's mouth, the two entities in conflict right now. Survivor's guilt. Daniels can't allow himself to go through it twice. These pre-mission briefings are perfect for those of us that spread out playing the campaign and just setting the stage for each one. I took my sweet time, but I mentioned it. If I don't make it home, well, just watch over him, Paul. Watch over them works for both if he's alive or dead. My orders were to fall back, but I just couldn't leave him. I told my men 
we're gonna hold this pass. I've kind of been talking about this reveal all video. The entire game's narrative is ratty on this scene, it feels like, and it works. For the nice quick four hour campaign, it's good. Brings a strong through line between these two men so they can finally work together through mutual trauma. No go. Not without my platoon. Daniels, the best rider die right alongside with Dustman. Also, my platoon. Still keeping his duty as corporal. A hero's welcome. My girl in my arms. Hell, even a bronze star. You want in, now's the time. Get the f out of my way. Love that though he's somewhat come around on Daniels, he's not just magically nice and a changed man who's seen the error of his ways or whatever. No matter how bad or how much a developer may have missed the mark, I just love World War II games. There's just an indescribable allure to the time period that I'm sure I share with many of you. And this might be one of the best ones in recent memory, right along there with Battlefield 5. The bridge historically failed to blow, even after they rigged it, and after the attempts to bomb it from the air with planes. It reminds me of this line from the game. They're not all bad. They did give us Kepler, Mozart, all right, college. Marlena Dietrich. See, they constructed one damn sturdy bridge, among other things. You might have played this turret section and thought, damn, this is going forever. And that's for good historical reasons. The Battle of Remagen is credited with the greatest anti-aircraft artillery battles in American history. It's reported almost 400 German aircraft attempted to destroy the bridge, with the Allies taking down up to 30% of them, thwarting the air offense. I believe I owe you an apology. You owe me a hell of a lot more than that. I understand how hollow this rings, and I felt some need to lump this in with the question I asked you earlier. Would this have been better left out instead of just giving us the most minimal lip service to it? I'd like to know your thoughts. I personally believe if you're going to introduce such a major issue, you actually need to address it and not just nod at it. Because the way World War II does it, it feels like it's just in there for the sake of what some might call woke points. So that Activision and Sledgehammer can show that they care without actually having to do the dirty hard work to actually presenting it fully from all different sides. There are reports of POW camps in the area. Davis has ordered us to wait for authorization before conducting a sweep. But I guess you know what to do with Davis's orders. <laughs> I do love that though. Does it excuse Pearson almost executing Daniels? Uh, but they're cool now since they both disobey orders, I guess. These were our guys. Take out your camera. The world's gotta know. COD World War II is stuck in a catch-22 when it comes to showing the atrocities of this time. You show it in all of its horrific truth, your sales and distribution might be heavily affected. You shy away and only give passing mention to it. Everyone calls you a coward and authentic and disrespectful to the lives lost. So Call of Duty World War II, the FPS juggernaut that's about shooting action set pieces needed to thread that needle perfectly. And I say they did the best they could. I'm conflicted. I thought I knew what cruelty was. I didn't know anything. But one thing's for certain. What I saw will stay with me forever. They had them living worse than animals. From the looks of it, they were beaten, starved, and worked to the bone. We hear how horrible the conditions are from Daniels, but we aren't seeing it. Even as we walk around the forced labor camp, there is a disconnect for me with what they are showing, which isn't much. My entire life, I've always heard about the atrocities committed, but it's always when you actually see it. That's when the real weight of it takes hold. And World War II shies away from that. Sledgehammer did give it respect to what happened as much as they could. We don't turn this solemn moment into an action set piece to then be whiplash with the reality of it, no. Most of the camps here were already deserted once the Allies were moving through Germany. So what we're left with is the aftermath of it all. The history is also there as Burger Camp was abandoned ahead of the Allies and forced the POWs on the death march, which was ordered by the real life Sergeant Erwin Metz, whom in game we get to put down to save Zussman. In real life, it wasn't as action movie-y as he was just sentenced to death after his capture. I don't envy the position Sledgehammer found themselves in, especially with Activision breathing down their neck. You died right there in the snow. All because I couldn't. Couldn't. Damn it. I'm coming, Zussman. Red, take the shot! Take the shot! Give the audience two plus two. Don't give them four. I think that's why I'm struggling to win this scene. This reveal doesn't resonate as much because it's in the 11th hour that we're shown and just told Daniel's character arc instead of getting to understand his struggle ourselves. Had they just shown us that Paul had really died at the midpoint of this story, say, after Turner dies, then Daniel opens up to Zuss or even just to us in a letter to Paul, we could put it together ourselves as he's running through the forest that he wants to atone for what he couldn't do for Paul. I'll win this scene for the character arc being there, even if I don't love the execution. Seeing us like this is our one bit of actually seeing firsthand what the Nazis did to the POWs. I'll give them that, and it's hard to see how the life and pluck drained out of someone who once was the lifeblood of this group. We end just as we started with a pep talk from Davis. When my son asks what I did, I'll tell him I fought with the first. 
And that crazy bastard Pearson. <laughs> Crazy ain't the half of it. Calling back to what Daniel said after ripping up his discharge papers. For both of them, the actual half of it is that undying loyalty to their brothers. To the end. To the end. I can still hear the wolves, Paul. Sometimes I still see him coming. But you showed me how to fight him. So this belongs to you. Because the sacrifice you made. God, are these strings just beautiful. And the theme of brotherhood and humility just can't be matched sometimes. God, World War II is not perfect. I know towards the end there, it got a little, not negative, but more critical and conversational about the game instead of just ignoring any issues and just praising the good. World War II is a tough time in our history. World at War showed and focused on the struggles and horrors that the war had militarily. Whereas World War II wanted to focus on the heroics of the Allies and try to touch on the atrocities the Third Reich committed at the same time right at the end. I believe it's why Sledgehammer waited until the very end and titled the mission Epilogue, as they wanted to try and markedly shift the tone from action World War II shooter to serious history. And to their credit, unless it was going to be an aspect they covered throughout the entire game, I think it was the right move. The game as a whole is a good time. We had some shakeups of the gameplay formula with the stealth missions having a bit more depth and with the moment to moment gunplay having a health bar and squad abilities. And let's not forget to mention one last time how gorgeous the game is. Even six years later, it's stunning. But at the end of the day, this is still a COD game and I had to keep reminding myself about that going through it. To not judge it too harshly as campaign isn't and hasn't been for over a decade the focus of this game, but it is the focus of this channel. It's always been an interesting challenge winning COD campaigns. Some are easier than others, but the scripts don't just write themselves like a God of War Ragnarok or Spider-Man. We've almost made it through the entire COD franchise in this channel, which is kind of exciting. And we've just crossed 100 everything great about videos, which is a huge milestone. This video marks the 101st. I've never been one for celebrations when crossing milestones such as this, but I do want to thank all of you who have stuck with me and with this channel for so long. You guys make all of this possible, and it's been an amazing last two years doing this full time. I often don't find time in videos to talk directly to you guys in this manner, as you know, I believe it's better to just let the content be what you came for, discussing the game, but with our audience being 93% male, I think a game about brotherhood would be the perfect one to thank all of you. You 7% girlies, I love you too. And, you know, reading the comments and hearing about the times I've helped you guys through a bad day or that my words brought tears to your eyes has some days been the only thing between me sticking with this or giving it all up and moving on. So, thank you. And I am so excited for this coming fall season. We got lots of great games coming and a whole bunch of videos I'm going to be making for them. So, be ready for that and make sure you subscribe to see that. And remember everyone, drive the speed limit, drink some water and love one another. Pizza!